A new Rec Room original released, a new Rec Con announced, and hints at custom avatars coming to Rec Room in the future. Hello everybody, I'm Billabob from BVR, and welcome back to Rec Room Roundup, where we go over the latest in Rec Room news and updates. So let's take a look at the recent updates to the game, starting with a breakdown on Showdown, and what it could mean for the future of Rec Room. We were correct about the hints I talked about in my last video, and the new Rec Room original turned out to be a Wild West PvP game. It's pretty heavily based on Paintball Team Battle, but there are a couple of differences that help it to stand out. First up, it has its own new set of weapons, which consists of a pistol, burst rifle, and shotgun like laser tag and paintball have. The next main difference from paintball is that the game is just much faster. Teams are only 3v3 now, and the goal is only to get to 25 kills instead of 50. The map is also much smaller, and you can spawn anywhere on it instead of just your team's side. I personally prefer this over the slower pace of paintball, but it's just kind of up to preference. What? I just found a random picture someone took and put right here of them buying the orange cube in the middle of this game. The map for Showdown's pretty cool, and you can tell they put quite a bit of effort into the design of it. There's a cool little train that comes through every once in a while, and it's got some really cool verticality elements. There is only one map, though, which is a downside compared to Paintball's, like, seven. And I can't really talk about Showdown's map without talking about the other elephant in the room, which is the fact that it was made almost entirely with Maker Pen tools. All of the previous Rec Room originals were modeled in Blender and then brought into Unity, where they were given code and made into actual games. But Showdown Showdown was coded entirely with Circuits V2, which is kind of the in-game programming language that everyone has access to. This is disappointing to a lot of people because the main thing separating Rec Room Originals from community-made rooms in a lot of people's eyes was the fact that they're made with Unity and Blender. But I don't think it really matters too much as long as the game is still fun, and there is a reason they did this, which I'll get into in a second. So the coding was done with Circuits, but a lot of the art details on the map were also done with the Maker Pen. It's kind of like they modeled out the base of a lot of the buildings in Blender and then brought it into Rec Room and then used the Maker pen to add details. So what's their reasoning for using the in-game tools like this instead of just using Unity and Blender like everyone expected? First off, they probably just wanted to show the kind of things you could do with the in-game creation tools and show that you can make Rec Room original quality experiences with the current tools. Also, using circuits for the game code makes it way easier for them to fix bugs faster and let them experiment with new things. And also, using the same tools that creators have helps them see like what tools may be lacking, which they can then improve with updates in the future. So the bottom line with Showdown here is that the game is pretty fun, but there's still a lot of questions left to be answered. Like, is this the last Rec Room original? Are we even going to be getting any more in the future if their goal is just to make Rec Room originals like community rooms? Also, they say the game was made entirely with UGC tools, which is mostly true, but as we previously discussed, there are some impossible Blender models in the room. They did say that not all of these UGC tools have been released to creators yet, so does that mean we'll somehow be able to make these Blender quality models in-game sometime? Because that would be an absolutely massive crazy change, but that sort of feels like what they're hinting at here. We'll probably get answers to all of that and more in the future, so if you want to stay up to date with Rec Room News, then make sure to subscribe, and I'll bring it to you right when it happens. Alright, so that's cool and all, but what updates were there besides Showdown? Well, we finally got the Unlimited Colors update that I talked about in my last video. Instead of being stuck to the basic 62 colors, there's now a color selection menu that lets you pick any color that exists, basically. I already talked about the implications of this in the last video, but basically it's just gonna make art and buildings stand out a lot more and open up a bunch of possibilities. We also got Beacon V2, some weird anchor scaling thing that I still don't fully understand. But basically for updates, there isn't too much to look at besides Showdown and the new colors. Which means it's time to talk about upcoming events and news. First up here, there have been some changes to Rec Room's video partner program, which is what allows YouTubers to get codes like this that people can use in-game to support them. Previously, if someone made a purchase of tokens or Rec Room Plus using a creator's code, that creator would get a 10% cut of that purchase. And also, if you supported someone in game, that support would last 90 days without needing to be renewed. Well, they've now changed it so that creators only get a 7.5% cut of purchases, and that support only lasts 45 days now. That is a pretty significant cut, and I can actually tell you that it's probably going to go even lower in the future, probably down to around 5%, which is only half of what it originally was. So that means as time goes on, my prospects of this being my full-time job are basically becoming less and less because I'm getting paid less and less. So if you like my content and you want to help me make that happen, then just use code 
code BVRR in Rec Room to support me if you're making any purchases. Also, applications for the third wave of video partners has opened, so if you have over 5,000 followers on any social media platform, you can apply. Next up, they've announced RecCon 2022, which we all expected, so there isn't too much to say about it. It'll probably be a lot like the previous two RecCons, with a bunch of expo halls and booths and panels. It'll be happening between September 22nd and 25th, which is in about a month, and I'm sure we'll be getting more information on it as we get closer. Okay, this announcement is actually about me, so listen up. You may have noticed over the past few weeks, they've been doing a bunch of AMAs for YouTubers. There was one with Bothaya, and then Therapeutic, and then Slat. Well, I am glad to say that I am next up in line, and the BVR AMA is going to be coming up on September 9th at 4 p.m. CST. I'll be broadcasting to everybody live, answering any questions that you guys ask in the Reddit thread down below. You can also sign up with the event link below if you're interested. I really hope to see you there. It's gonna be really awesome, and I, yeah, please come. In more serious news, let's look at the title finally, and talk about the possibility of custom avatars coming to Rec Room. So I'm sure you've all seen this picture of Mark Zuckerberg and Horizon Worlds, which is basically Facebook's metaverse or whatever, and he posted this to announce it was coming to some new regions, and everyone made fun of it because it looks awful. So Sean, a Rec Room staff member, made a tweet joking about this, comparing an Eiffel Tower in Rec Room to the Eiffel Tower that Mark Zuckerberg posted in Horizon Worlds. What an awesome, funny little tweet. I'm sure you're really wondering what this has to do with custom avatars. Well, this tweet got a reply from some guy in the industry saying he wasn't sold on Rec Room avatars and that he wished costumes could go between rooms. And then Sean replied to this tweet with an absolute bombshell saying that custom shirts could go between rooms and that it was just a matter of time before costumes and other elements could as well. I'm sorry, what? You're going to maybe be able to take costumes like this and take them between any room you want? And what does he mean by other elements? Does that mean you're going to be able to, like, hook up gadgets to a costume and do stuff with that too? Because at that point, if you can make a costume of anything you want and then take it anywhere you want, that's literally just custom avatars like VRChat has. Now, before we go too crazy, I should probably point out that this tweet is definitely just unfiltered speculation from Sean and that it probably doesn't mean anything. Sean handles more with the social side of Rec Room and not as much the development side, that would actually make that kind of decision. And he isn't confirming anything here, he's just saying that he would guess this is something that might happen in the future. All that being said, I do still think that it means something that a somewhat high up Rec Room staff member sees this in the future for Rec Room, whether that's what he actually handles with or not. I honestly don't know how I would feel if Rec Room added custom avatars like this, I feel like that'd just be a lot of chaos, but let me know what you think in the comments. Alright, let's talk about this 20,000 token amulet that appeared in the Invention Tower last weekend and then disappeared. Similar to the pop-up show, that showed up in the rec center about a month or two ago with a bunch of exclusive items, there's now a pop-up shop in Invention Tower. Most of these items here aren't too special, except for this one, the Amulet of Elsewhere. Without Rec Room Plus, this amulet is 20,000 tokens, which is the most expensive item that's ever been sold in Rec Room. Besides being mysterious and limited time, it actually has some additional functionality. If you buy the amulet, then this secret door next to the shop will pop open and you can walk through it. Remember, S is the person in the Rec Room lore that that's making all these pop-up shops appear. I don't know, there's a bunch of codes here you can translate if you want, I don't think they really mean too much. Also in the room Murder V3, which was created by Jay, a staff member who does all the lore stuff, this amulet has appeared in the thumbnail, and in the description it says that it has some special functionality in the room. I'm assuming that if you wear the amulet in the room, you can walk through a secret wall or something. So yeah, so far this amulet doesn't seem to do too much, but it is cool that they now have the functionality where special things can happen based on the outfit items you're wearing. And we'll just have to wait and see if this amulet does more in the future. Here is this week's weekly rotation of items. You can see we're still getting a ton of cowboy stuff from Showdown. If you want to see a video about how I got this orange cube to be the most purchased invention in all of Rec Room, then click here. But otherwise, that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching.